Five years ago in the Arcadian Empire, a few hundred years after the tyrannical rule, the Arcadian Empire was converted in a coup d'etat. The one who achieved this was a lone black dragon mecha. Even after years, the true identity of the knight remains a mystery. Year after year, people respect him and tell this legend until today, who call him the black hero. The anime tells the story of our protagonist Lux running on top of the keyboard, but ends up stepping on the rotten wood and falling into the women's bathroom. However, he ends up falling on top of a very influential girl at that age. He angrily asks her to say her last words before she dies, thinking that girls like to have their bodies complimented. He talks about all her curves and voluminous features, but ends up getting slapped in the face and arrested without any rights. Shouting to see if anyone can hear him, he says that a girl had her bag stolen by a boy, so he runs after her to see if he can get it, but ends up tripping and falling in the girl's bathroom. Suddenly Krolsifer appears, enchanted by Lux's sword device and his sword. It is not very common to see people carrying two swords, even darker ones. Trying to disguise herself, another girl appears, not knowing why Krolsifer is there. She came to take him to the principal. Halfway there, Tilfar finds out that he fell from the top of the building to take advantage since the high school boys are not at school. Trying to explain himself, he realizes that it won't work and continues walking. Soon he realizes that this place is an academy. The director knows who Lux, prince of the old Arcadia Empire, is. The director explains that this is the Dragonite Academy run by the New Kingdom. Going a little deeper, since the coup d'etat five years ago, the New Kingdom has devoted all its energy to training Dragonites so that they never succumb to the strength of other countries. So, it became a school made more for training girls said to have a high aptitude as drag knights. This place is more for boys than girls. However, he found an exception and wants Lux to work there. He was surprised since he is a man in the kingdom due to a failure in the coup d'etat plans. Few drag knights remain so boys like Lux are quite valuable. The teacher noticed that he has two swords on his waist. Before entering the school, Leisha gave a peck on the door that still did not approve him as a member of the academy. The teacher thinks it's better than the girls who suffered with what happened to punish Lux. Leisha challenges him to a duel to see if he's worthy of becoming becoming a drag knight of this academy or not. The girls find this super interesting, but the teacher gives them cold water by saying that he won the prize money from the Imperial City Tournament. In addition to having the title of Invincible Weakling, drawing her weapon, she explains that the dispute is a one-on-one -on -one duel with the Mecha Dragons. If he loses, he'll go to prison as a criminal. If he wins, he'll be acquitted and can work at the academy. She introduces herself as the princess of this new kingdom, Leisha. The scene cuts to Lux talking to her sister Aerie who can't believe what just happened. Lux notices that the girl next to her isn't sitting down. No Kudo comments that a rumor has started at school that Lux can lift skirts just by breathing. Eri asks him not to be arrested, if that happens she will have to pay the debt herself. Since the coup d'etat, the surviving members of the former royal family are considered criminals. The debt they both took on in exchange for amnesty is not something Eri can pay off on her own. Lux is working as hard as she can and is not loitering around town. Eri asks her not to lose this fight under any circumstances. Leisha is currently undefeated in high school. The fight will finally begin. On one side, we will have Lux, the former seventh prince of the ancient Lux kingdom, and on the other, Leisha. The fight is about to begin. Leisha asks if the boy knows why he called her to talk. Not knowing what it is, she thinks it's better to tell him in case he wins. Transforming, she realizes that she only has one wyvern, an old machine. She has transformed into the divine dragon's mecha. Lux is scared just by looking at it. This is a rare and ancient weapon with an ability incomparable to that of generic ones. It can only be controlled by those who have enough power. In terms of power, Lux is light years ahead of his opponent. Finally the fight begins, with several shots against Lux, the boy manages to dodge with extreme ease. However, it was all a distraction and he launches his fire blow against the boy who manages to block it. Lux asks him to consider this fight a draw. Leisha thinks he is a complete idiot and uses her special equipment. Launching against the boy, he manages to dodge everyone, but it was again an ambush and luckily the powerful blow did not hit him. Eri knows that her brother does not have a strong power, but when he decides something, he goes to the end. Meanwhile, the fight continues in full swing and Leisha is angry because he only dodges and thinks that must be why he is the invincible weakling. Stressed, Leisha decides to use her most powerful ability that only Divine Mecha Dragon has. Using it against the boy, she makes him fall to the ground since this blow controls gravity. Leisha is very tired, this power makes the person very tired and the Mecha Dragon becomes uncontested. Leisha ended up losing control of her dragon and people are asking her to get off. Realizing that she is going to lose because of this, suddenly a flute noise echoes in the sky along with a dragon eating a Mecha. People are not understanding the reason why this monster appears in the place because it only appears in the mountains. The dragon managed to break the barrier as if if it were nothing, Leisha is in danger and Lux steps in front to protect her from the blow. The girls don't understand why the boy is fighting that creature since there is no way to defeat it with this current mecha. Eri trusts her brother because there is only one and it is impossible to be defeated. Meanwhile, Lux is asking Leisha for help to aim at the enemy while attracting attention. At the right time, she will give the signal shooting at the dragon which she manages to dodge easily. Going towards the girl, Lux receives the blow and Leisha realizes that this is the signal and shoots at the dragon which manages to defeat it with just one blow. Lux fell to the ground 
around after the fight and Lisha ran to help him. In the bathtub, she remembers that he left himself open to an attack to create an opportunity, besides this being the first time that a man tried to help or protect her. Meanwhile, Lux is lying in bed and remembers a man asking if his wyvern will cooperate with his Bahama. Before he can finish, he suddenly wakes up scared and Lisha asks if his wounds still hurt. She reveals that she is doing all this just because she was saved. The thing she wanted to tell him at the time of the fight is that she could not let him go because he had seen her the way she came into the world. Lux found it very beautiful, but she comments that it is because she saw something else and shows him the emblem of the ancient empire. She asks him not to tell anyone what he just saw and the boy swears on everything that he won't do it. As he leaves the room, he tells Lux that starting tomorrow he will enter the academy and become a royal knight cadet. As he leaves, he asks him to call her Leisha like a classmate and Krolsifer ends up hearing everything. The next day, it was decided that from today on, Lux would be a cadet at the academy and would join the class. When he introduced himself, the girls already knew who he was, the one who defeated Gargoyle with Leisha. Going to his seat, Philify called him his childhood friend, so he decided to sit with her and Leisha became jealous of this decision. Calling each other by nicknames, Leisha became even more angry with what she was seeing. When the bell rang, Leisha came closer and all the girls wanted to have Lux as she did everything. But Leisha decides to have him all to herself and wants to hire him as her personal handyman. Before she can answer anything, Krolsifer arrives in the classroom asking to borrow Lux since the principal wants to talk to him. Lux realized that she helped him leave the room. Krolsifer took the boy out of the room to ask if he knows the black hero. He was the drag knight who with just one machine caused the fall of the old empire. His identity is kept secret and he wants to ask the boy for a secret. He asks him to find him since he has a matter to resolve with him. He shows us the scene from the past again about the progress of the human experiment of the imperial army eventually. In addition to having been Lux's childhood friend, the man comments that it seems like all they can do is kill the entire party. Lux calls the man her brother and wants to minimize the victims. When she wakes up the next day, she realizes that it was all a dream. Looking to the side, she notices that Philify is in her room. The girl comments that this is her room and doesn't understand why he is there. Hearing a noise, Tilfar thinks she's getting in the way and closes the door again. Ari is upset with her brother, who has just arrived and is already flirting with her childhood friend. Lux explains that it wasn't like that at all. When she was sleeping in her room, Philify showed up and the director told her that they are now roommates. After explaining this to her sister, she heads off to her first handyman job. When he arrives at the place, he realizes that it is Leisha who has finished fixing his wyvern. She only fixed it because the boy is part of the special forces made up of the best cadets. Leisha knows that he has strong abilities and since the country is new, she needs his strength. She wants him to be her companion today. When he arrives at the place, he realizes that he forgot his wallet and Lux decided to pay for something simpler and she loves it. After being kind to her, she ended up feeling a pang in her heart. Lux took her to a beautiful view and was impressed that she could fix the robots in addition to becoming a queen in the future. Leisha asked if she could become a good queen and added that she remembered the mark of the old empire that was already on her belly. Leisha told a little more about her story. Five years ago, she was captured by the old empire as a hostage by her father, who had participated in the coup d'etat. The coup took place without negotiations, so she ended up being abandoned and this mark is proof that she was a prisoner of the old empire. All this time she wanted her father to choose her and not the country. Since she was unable to eliminate herself, she decided to become an official member of the empire. So, she does not consider herself the kind of person worthy of becoming a queen. After her father's death, as the only surviving member of the Atismata family, she became the queen of the new kingdom while hiding the mark of the old empire. She then asks the boy if it was difficult when he lost his position as prince of the old empire. Before he can answer, the scene returns to him in the dormitory where he remembers that he never managed to do anything worthy of a prince. He remembers that on the day the empire fell, Lux had asked her brother to reduce the number of deaths, but he had no mercy and eliminated all the people, to which he replies that it was thanks to Lux that they were saved. Since it was easy, they didn't even need to use the whistle to call the abyss. He explains that if he doesn't eliminate them all, sooner or later they will want revenge and go after him. This weakness of Lux's prevents him from becoming a king. Waking up from his nightmare, it is time to go to school. Upon arriving at school, it is explained that in the morning, a large abyss appeared before everyone. The location is in the southeast ruin. At the moment, drag knights from the New Kingdom security forces are working to suppress it. In addition, they are preparing for a battle to organize an interception force, so everyone is to be ready until further instructions. All the girls went to the location to defeat the abyss, but Lux stayed to take charge and is worried about two having appeared in such a short time. The girls are about to shoot the monster, however, they hear a flute sound and the monster begins to swell, until it explodes and a gargoyle appears and fills the monster's place. This man who is with them explains that he came from the royal capital, he is the captain of the guard of the Order of Knights of the Empire of Arcadia, Forest. Leisha realizes that he is a traitor, but the man appeared only to carry out justice. The man with the flute orders the creatures to attack. Leisha is having a hard time and still manages to defeat two of them. Upon receiving the news, Lux decides to go help Leisha with the monsters. Ari asks her not to go because she only has one wyvern and cannot defeat them. On the battlefield, the girls can no longer take it anymore.
anymore and are planning to retreat. Leisha realizes that she needs to hit the man with a whistle with which she controls the creatures, ordering the girl to attack. She manages to dodge but ends up suffering two blows and falls to the ground. Suddenly, the rebel army of the old empire arrives at the scene. Lux is arriving and Leisha knows that she has not been able to do anything even though she is a queen. All this time she has been pretending to be a princess. Even so, she wants to become a queen out of love for everyone and prove it once and for all. The man comes closer and shows the tattoo he has on his stomach and says that he was the one who did this. Remembering those responsible, she throws a knife at the man who becomes angry when he is detained. About to attack her, Lux appears to stop the blow. He says that he also spoke as a kingdom, but he wants Leisha to be recognized as someone worthy of being queen of the new kingdom. Lux ends up having his arm cut off, so he decides to summon Bahamut, the Black Divine Mecha Dragon. In the background, Cruncifer realizes that this is the Black Dragon. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, Lux is fighting everyone and defeating them one by one with beautiful moves. We explain that in the coup five years ago, out of the Empire's 1,200 Mecha Dragons, a single Dragonite destroyed them all. The scene soon returns to Lux, who is furious since he is the prince of the old Empire and doesn't know why he is attacking him. He was supposed to be on his side, so he goes after Lux, calling him a traitor. With the utmost calm in the world, he uses his fire attack and manages to defeat the man with ease. Eri explains that her brother is not the hero, but the destroyer of the Empire, the weakest invincible Dragonite. The next day, all the girls surprised Lux by welcoming her to school. Leisha wanted to thank her for saving her on the battlefield. However, the teacher held a competition for all the girls. Whoever manages to get the form has up to one hour to spend a week with Lux just for her as a handyman. Running away, all the girls ran after him. Lux managed to hide in the workshop where Leisha works. The girl says that everyone who knows about him won't tell anyone. But she wants to know a little more about the abilities of Bahamut's divine vestment. When she was going to explain, she ended up being captured. But she asks to be released and she will give him the form. When she releases him, it was all a lie. So she runs into the forest and finds Philify there. She is there because her sister promised her a cake if she managed to capture him. Managing to hold it with absolute strength, letting the form fall, the girl tries to catch it, but he is faster and runs off to hide. Upon arriving at a place that seems safe, suddenly several girls appear to change and he had not noticed that it is the place where the girls change. Krolsifer went to get a book and ended up seeing it, thinking that it would be all over. She managed to hide that it is in the place. Lux realizes that the time is up. Krolsifer asks to see the form. When she hands it over, she reveals that she set the clock forward and Lux will have to spend a week doing whatever she wants. Krolsifer's request is that he become her boyfriend for a week. Eri heard some rumors about her brother, but it doesn't matter since he is old enough to get married. She doesn't mind having fun, but she doesn't want him to forget the position they have to be protected. Upon arriving at the boardroom, she shows the whistle of the leader who attacked the city two weeks ago. He used this whistle to control the abysses. The director suspects that this is the whistle found deep in the ruins. Soon, there will be an investigation by the Order of Chivalry. At this time, she wants Lux to confirm whether or not this whistle is a key. Accepting the proposal, Eri asks him to be careful about the fact that he is her boyfriend. He feels that she is hiding something, besides being transferred from the country of Emer. The next day, he asks why she was transferred to another country since she is the daughter of the Duke. She explains that she was transferred to this school because she was ordered to get engaged or married. In a few weeks, rulers from her country arrived in the city, so he asks her to do her best, calling him closer. She says that if she doesn't agree, she'll tell everyone what happened the other day. Accepting the conditions, Leisha is increasingly furious with the situation. While they are alone at night, Leisha suddenly arrives at the place and kicks the door, wanting to make Cruncifer jealous. She says that they both already held hands, but she thinks that it's nothing big. Lux asks her if she knows what a kiss is, and she embarrassedly replies that it's something people do after marriage and that it's the same thing to do to make babies. Lux realizes that she's nothing and everyone decides to go to sleep. The next morning, they both decide to go for a walk as a couple to prove to everyone that they really are real. After having fun, they return home and end up falling into an ambush by the army of the old empire. Cruncifer asks for a gap so he can summon his weaponry. Lux goes after those on the ground, doing a beautiful sword dance and easily defeating them both. About to be hit by gunfire, Cruncifer manages to summon in time and create a shield. Using his divine dress, he manages to defeat them in the blink of an eye. Leisha suddenly arrives saying that this is Fafner's divine dress. The man runs away, Alterai's manages to stop the man who was running and she introduces herself as Cruncifer's maid. At a restaurant, Cruncifer introduces Lux as her boyfriend, but suddenly Lord Balzaride appears at the place. He introduces himself as her future fiancé, one of the four nobles. The Kreutzer house has a historical blood tie that continues since the era of the ancient empire. Tomorrow, the families are already discussing wedding plans. Cruncifer replies that this will not be possible since she has a boyfriend. The man becomes furious and wants to fight a duel against Lux. The boy accepts without thinking twice and soon Balzaride leaves the place. He is talking to the man who has a cap hiding his face, where they are talking about the ruins, but the horn that serves as the key to enter the depths is in the hands of a certain person, and he is certain that he will achieve the expectations that the boy wants. The next day, Lux is very tired and Cruncifer arrives to thank him for yesterday for accepting the duel.
duel. Cruncifer asks if he isn't upset about the duel. Lux was the one who accepted, so he has nothing to regret. Cruncifer thinks he is a great person, even though his fake boyfriend agreed to this duel. Leisha ended up overhearing everything and always knew that Cruncifer hates the policy of arranged marriages, so Lux accepted to be her boyfriend. Leisha wants to help Lux with some repairs, but the boy thinks he doesn't need so many things and Cruncifer leaves soon after because he has some business to take care of. Walking down the school hallway very sleepy, he is dragged by Till who takes him to a room and there is Fi and Leisha in maid outfits. Thanks to the hard work he has been doing lately, he wants him to ask for anything. They have prepared a good banquet for him to enjoy. The scene changes to Atismata Castle where the four great nobles have gathered. They are talking about Ragnarok for each ruin. There seems to be a powerful abyss that hides paranormal energy. As soon as they are suppressed, the Ragnarok called Poseidon, who once fossilized them, is trying to wake them from this state. The nobles are terrified by the news and need to prepare as soon as possible for this event. Many people are unsure whether the current ability of the New Kingdom's army alone can be a match for Ragnarok. The Lord asks them to calm down because in order to suppress Ragnarok, they need to continue investigating the ruins immediately and find the powerful weapon lying dormant there. To do this, he wants to leave this task to Balzaride. The scene cuts to the girls at school where the teacher talks about the investigation into the ruins. In order for this to happen, a key is needed and shows the whistle right after. So, leave that whistle in Lux's hands. Soon after, Leisha decides to make some adjustments to his Mecha Dragon. Lux is very tired and this time he managed to stay alone in the bathtub. When he looked to the side he noticed that Fi suddenly arrived at the place and discovers that it was all Fi's sister director's fault. She starts to sleep on the spot. When he picked her up so she wouldn't drown, he noticed a scar on the girl's back and not even she knew exactly what had happened. The day of the investigation would finally happen but suddenly Balzaride appeared on the scene and introduced himself to all the girls who would guide them there. He came to this place because his fiancé was there so he could let her get hurt. Upon arriving at the location, Cruncifer suddenly came out in front. Everyone looked closely and realized that there was an abyss in front of them. This monster was a Diablo which could destroy a city on its own. Before a girl could be attacked, Lux stepped in to stop the attack, but his sword was about to break and he was saved by Leisha, who kept shooting at the creature. Meanwhile, several allies were being defeated by the creature. Balzaride attacked the creature and managed to hit it, then challenged Lux. Whoever defeated the abyss first would be the winner and would win the duel. Cruncifer asks them to stop this nonsense and heads towards the creature, launching his divine blow at it. He manages to dodge it easily and the creature's power gains. Luckily, Lux managed to save her in time. Balzaride manages to defeat the creature with the axe, but realizes that it is close to exploding. Everyone takes up defense protection, but Cruncifer is having a hard time and Lux steps in front while Ruin is also shining. After an impact, Lux has a dream in which he tested a new power that ended up not working. When he wakes up, he realizes that he is in a completely different place and everyone is far away. Looking to the side, he realizes that Cruncifer is with him. Both were taken into the ruins thanks to the explosion. Walking together, she realizes that it is going to rain, but Cruncifer is very weak and ends up falling to the ground. Lux tries to help her, however, Cruncifer has a goal that needs to be accomplished no matter what happens. Trying to walk, she can't and Lux carries her on his shoulders so that she can get to the place she wants to go. Lux asks why she is after the Black Hero. She has been searching all this time because the Black Hero does not have a time limit with the locks like the common pilots have. Upon arriving at the place, Cruncifer enters the circle and the key to this place has been the same all this time. She explains that she is not human from this world, but the last survivor of the ruins. The place begins to collapse and Lux grabs her by the arm and runs away. Upon reaching a certain room, Cruncifer explains that she was discovered inside this box. She explains that when her adoptive father was inspecting the ruins of the religious country of Emer, he found it and took it. Previously, it was used as a link to a lost past. She had no memory of the past and had unknowingly spent time with the Infolk family. She soon realized that she was adopted. Her parents, siblings, servants all kept their distance from her. So she dedicated herself to her studies, etiquette, and being a drag knight so that she could win everyone's love, so that she could be part of the family. But she couldn't have what she wanted most. Even though she got her divine dragon, her own family told her that she was different. All this time she wanted to be part of the Infolk family. However, their true identities were those of a survivor of the ruins. They still don't know about their past, whether they have allies or not. Lux thinks they can search other minds to find their relatives. Cruncifer doesn't want to and shouldn't have brought them to this place. Lux is upset and at that moment he is the girl's boyfriend and everyone adores her and asks her not to say sad things. She says it's all a lie and asks him not to take it all seriously because she wanted to see this cute side of the boy. She doesn't know why he is so kind. The reason why he is so kind and docile is that he was kicked out of the imperial court along with his mother and Eri because of his grandfather. Because he was the educator, he saw the path the empire would take and couldn't keep quiet about it. But when he asked for help for his mother, there were no people who reached out to the suffering members of the royal family. In the end, they were abandoned by the royal family and the people. In the past, he had resentment. No one in the world helped him. It seemed like he would hate them all. Fi helped them, even though he had nothing of value to offer. That's when he realized he didn't want to hate everyone. He wanted to create a country where the people he loved could live without hate. While they were
were talking, Leisha arrived at the scene to save both of them who were trapped. Upon arriving home, Ari asked her brother if there had been any progress. Not wanting to admit that Cruncifer was the real key to that place, she simply said that she didn't find anything of value. When he realized that his brother had fallen asleep from exhaustion, he read the letter that Cruncifer left that would make him see his real objective. All this time she wanted to fight alone and arrived at the battlefield, where the fight would be in pairs. Balzaride, wanting to fight alone, manages to make one of the maids fall asleep. The fight between the two begins, and he throws his weapon away so that he is balanced. Receiving a blow, he manages to restrain him. But soon several shots are fired in his direction. Seeing that his blows are hitting, the boy suddenly receives several shots and as Goku appears on Cruncifer's back, knocking her to the ground. He comments that she is just a key in which she needs to serve him as her master. But suddenly Lux arrives at the scene apologizing for the delay. Using the Black Dragon's lock, Balzaride thought that he would have fled. Lux is the black hero and does not want to hand Cruncifer over to him. When attacking the man, he uses his shield to block. Lux realizes that he is using wise blood, Fafner's divided robe to read his movements. He manages to steal his opponent's ability and did the same with the maid. To use the power suddenly, he also sucked the energy from Cruncifer's mecha dragon. Attacking the girl directly, Lux gets in front but has his power stolen and with terrible speed Lux can't keep up with him. Cruncifer asks why he is doing all this for her. Eri explains that her brother is a very kind person. Even though everyone asks him not to do anything, he acts based on what is right and helps people. Balzaride comments on the existence of Ragnarok. To defeat it he needs to discover new armor and and gain new skills, in which the ruin has many things to be explored and Cruncifer is the key to all of this. Meanwhile, the fight is very tense, Lux is suffering a lot on the battlefield. He wants to save this country using another woman. Cruncifer realized that his clothes were stolen and asks him not to fight anymore. Lux, even so, is still the girl's boyfriend and will do everything in his power. The boy thought the fight was already won, but with a hidden power he went after Balzaride and managed to defeat him easily. Eri explains that Lux purposely made her dragon mecha go crazy, and that this power was kept until the last moment moment and released the double-edged sword. All this time her brother had been working on a secret way to obtain an abnormal power. The next day, Lux was accepted by the Infolk family for having defeated the Lord, so they are now both engaged. Trying to say that it was all an act, she was unable to do so and the servant left the place. Cruncifer doesn't like indecisive guys, but he really likes his aggressive nature and gives Lux a kiss on the mouth, and the girls outside saw everything. Asking if it wasn't enough, he gives her another French kiss. Cruncifer comments that if he really does marry her, he will do things like that again. But Leisha doesn't get tired of breaking down the doors and enters the place. The next day, we are told that there is a pervert on the loose, in addition to this Ragnarok, but at school there is a girl who can do well against him, Celestia Ralgris. Daughter of one of the four great nobles, she is the strongest of the third year in this academy. According to rumors, she hates men. Lux was forced to dress up as a woman, and when he sat on a bench in the square he met Celestia, but he got distracted and the pervert who was on the loose grabbed him by the arm. Luckily, Celestia managed to get there in time and escaped the scene with a bag of smoke. Suddenly a sword was coming towards him, but Lux managed to get in front of it and take the damage. When he was taken to the infirmary, Celestia bandaged him and realized that this girl has muscles and might be good with swords. Lux realizes that she was talking to a cat and, embarrassed, comments that it's not because she doesn't have friends and such. But he understands the situation and when she leaves the room, she introduces herself as Celestia. The scene changes to the Lord who thought he would be saved by the masked girl, but she turned him into a monster and summoned several abysses in the surroundings of the castle. The next day, Lux has made up her mind and needs to suppress Ragnarok. She she needs to talk to Celestia at least once about it. Suddenly, the door in her room knocks and it is an urgent matter. When she arrives at the principal's office, Celestia is there demanding that Lux be expelled even though he saved the place from the abyss. Lux asks her to let him join the patrol to defeat Ragnarok. The girl replies that she doesn't need to because she'll figure it out on her own. Lux won't leave the school anyway and Ragnarok isn't a threat that can be defeated alone. The principal has another point since half the school is unsure whether she wants Lux to stay there. It's better for everything to be resolved in a duel. Celestia accepts and will will meet him again on the battlefield. The next day, Celestia called several girls for sword training. After they all trained, they became very tired and suddenly Lux was called to give Celestia a massage. She kept her eyes closed the whole time and didn't notice his presence, so she changed her clothes so she wouldn't notice anything. After finding out who the girl was, she asked him to stay a little longer so they could talk. Lux said that she had something to do, so she needed to leave the place. Celestia invites her to go for a walk tomorrow, deciding to accept leaving the room, but suddenly Sonia asks why a girl who has never seen her left Celestia room. Pulling out his sword, Cruncifer manages to make her retreat and asks Lux to be careful since Sonia wants to get him expelled from school. The next day, they go out in the capital. Celestia wants to go to several women's stores, but Lux doesn't feel comfortable and decides to leave the place. Outside, the girl confesses that she thinks the freshmen don't like her. Lux replies that it's not true and really likes hanging out with her. They are very happy, they decide to eat and Lux thinks the girl's food is wonderful. After taking a nap, Celestia asks her to keep a secret. She doesn't really hate men. The next day, she receives news that they can't find the fossilized 
Ghost Ragnarok because he escaped and no one knows where he went. The scene changes to Celestia, where her friend says that the boy is going to go swimming with the girls. She explains to her friend that she is not angry with men since she was little her teachers were strong and kind men, but she is unsure how to interact with younger men. In her position, she cannot depend on or be adored by a man because she is the eldest daughter of the Ralgris house of the four great nobles, in addition to being the leader of the Order of Chivalry. Upon arriving at the beach, the girls are all in bikinis. However, Celestia wants to find her friend, who is actually Lux. The girls pull her to put on her bikini, not wanting to run away, and end up bumping into her. Leaving the place angry, she shows us that that day she wants to apologize to Lux. She learned battle tactics and the way of the sword from Wade Roadbelt. Lux's grandfather, it is thanks to him that she obtained this power. He ended up dying because of her, so she has to make sure that her grandson is not exposed to danger. That is why in this battle, she does not want to allow herself to lose. The day of the fight has arrived, Celestia has the divine mecha dragon considered the strongest in the academy. The scene changes to that same pervert who is being manipulated by the hooded woman running through the forest. Everyone already knows that she is Sonia who is after Lux. She reveals that her mission is to eliminate everyone from the new empire. When she transforms the scene returns to the fight in which Celestia attacks her thunder blow against Lux. Managing to retaliate with her power of truth, she teleports behind the boy. However, a strange noise starts and Ragnarok emerges from the ground. Lux manages to protect the girl who goes after her, thus managing to injure the creature. When suddenly Sonia appears on the scene, suddenly the man with the flute appears and we are revealed that he is Lux's brother. Managing to make Ragnarok return to the battlefield, Sonia hates goodbye and goes after Celestia. Lux again steps in front to save the girl. The place is completely covered in fog and Celestia decides to explain exactly what happened. When she was little, she found out by chance about the corruption of the old empire. She simply spoke to her teacher about it. He then warned the old empire was arrested and died in prison. As if that weren't enough, like his blood relatives, the entire family was expelled from the palace. Even so, the last thing he said was that Celestia was right. That's why he must fix everything in place of his teacher. The girl apologizes for everything and that she deceived him. Lux reveals that he also deceived her because she is that girl. When he transforms into the black hero, he respects her just like his grandfather. He heads toward Sonia and manages to cut off part of her equipment with ease. Heading towards the creature, he dodges the tentacles and manages to slice them quite easily and with just one blow defeats Ragnarok. We show the day that Lux met Fi. Together with his friends they ended up knocking down a statue and blaming it. Feeling bad, he decides to take all the blame even though he didn't take it down. After that, Fi thanks him for taking the blame and they both become friends. Returning to the present, he is called by Leisha who gave an up to his weaponry. But after seeing that it really improved a lot, however, he can't use it unless it's something really important. Everyone is directed to the place where Bahamut was defeated. Thanks to this, there is a possibility that the gate to the deeper layers of the ruins is open. The scope of their investigation is very broad. This time she and Eri will participate. They already have a method to enter the ruins, according to the investigation information, the ancient text written in the circle in the center, after a certain time, to attract it along with the light. Upon entering the site to do the research, the ruin contains 17 floors. Upon entering the forest, she realizes that the place has many destroyed things. All the machines to maintain the ecosystem have stopped working. At this moment, there are no enemies near the place. Everyone decides to go in groups. Celestia, as she is strong, is assigned to go alone, realizing that she was quite sad. Lux calls her to go halfway with her group and she immediately accepts. Walking around the place, they find a girl and Krolsifer arrives right behind her and asks the girls to back off because she doesn't know if she is a friend or an enemy. Touching the girl's face, she wakes up and restarts her system. Soon, the girl turns it off and says she has no memory at all. She doesn't want to be thrown away and asks for her programming to be stabilized. She introduces herself as La Krolhi, supervisor of the ruin. Krolsifer asks if she knows everything about the past. Having slept too much, she ended up forgetting almost everything. Since she doesn't know anything, she asks not to be abandoned so that she can remember she needs to restart the system. When taking her to all the girls, Krolsifer is bothered by the fact that she always addresses her as administrator and thinks that she really has a creator. Meanwhile, Fi is very weak, having not been with the Drignite for a long time. The scene changes to the meeting of the four nobles where they discover that Ragreed has escaped and the man probably wants revenge against all of them. At this point, the superior mecha dragons are insufficient everywhere. They think that the students can handle it, however, it is still too early to put them into battle and they need to think a little more before giving the order. The scene returns to Lux, who together manages to find the place where the abyss are born. Suddenly, Vi hears a loud sound and realizes that people are coming. The boy planted some seeds and now thinks it's the right time to play. When suddenly, Lux takes a punch in the face, Abyss goes towards the girls, but he manages to jump in front of them and prevent them from getting hurt and counterattacks. Fighting the creature, his arm is cut off. Eri explains that when this ruin goes on alert, three abs are released. Two stay outside the cave and one goes inside. Fi activates her armor and goes towards the creature. Thanks to her ability she can sense where it is going. Upon entering the next floor, Lux felt something bad and remembered several corpses. Returning to reality she realizes that her friend is taking a beating, so she 
manages to cut the beast in half. Upon entering the place, he realizes that it is familiar. Back in the days of the old empire, this was the place where weapons for human experiments were produced. He came to this place five years ago and found Phi. Upon meeting her friend, she comments that the abyss is close. Suddenly, she starts to strangle Lux without any warning and her eye becomes demonic. In her mind, she remembers the day she promised she would create a better country. When she receives a good luck kiss, the scene changes to him being strangled. Calling out to her, she manages to react and faints shortly after. Suddenly that same boy appears in front of Lux. The scene changes to the girls who manage to defeat the exhibit quite a bit. Eri explains that they found a door, but it says that it can only be opened with the key and Krolsifer knows it's her. The scene returns to Lux who is threatening the boy, however, he explains that if he is eliminated, Vi will be too. Thanks to the Ragnarok plant that was injected into the girl, the living being that is implanted with this seed is corrupted from within by worms and turns into an abyss. She cannot go against Ragnarok's commands as his faithful servant. However, this whole time Phi has been opposing these commands, so she is suffering from a high fever and headache. He explains that he told Ragnarok to eliminate Lux, who is shocked to receive this news. If she continues to oppose the commands, she will go through hellish suffering and then die and turn to dust. The boy asks her to make a deal. Returning to her room, she remembers the words that if this continues, Phi will die in a few days. In order to save her, she will give Ragnarok the command to save her. He asks her to do all this in two days and uses Krolsifer to do it. When leaving the place, she says that she has the same hair color as her brothers and that she is different from the real one. Realizing that she woke up hungry, looking into her eyes she realizes that one is demonic. When leaving the room she remembers that she already helped him and now she doesn't know what to do. Behind her back appears her sister and explains that she found Phi five years ago. She had undergone the human experiment of the ancient empire. She explains that her sister was already dead, that girl who woke up in Phi's place. She became more resistant and more powerful than she was before. She realized that her sister was turning into an abyss after she became director of the academy. To save her, he needs the techniques of the ruins. He remembers when he lost his mother and Phi was always by his side. Returning to reality, it is already the next day, his armor ends up having several repairs. When suddenly he hears the voice of his brother calling him the weakest hero who prefers to lose by self-sacrifice. He explains that to save Phi he needs to break the horn and defeat Ragnarok, master of the seed. After Diver needs to ask a question and the scene is soon cut without informing us. Returning to her room, Phi already knows that she has an abyss inside her body. All this time she thought she could not die since her sister only has her. Lux asks her not to think about such nonsense and will find a way to save her. The next day, everyone goes to ruins. Upon arriving at the location, Krolsifer opens the door but does not reveal that it is the key, showing that she only gained a master's degree when she met the robot girl. Upon entering the location, she managed to successfully recover her lost memories. What she remembers is that she is to get rid of everyone present. The girl arrived at the location saying that they fell right into her plan. He reveals that all this time he never planned to release Phi. When he gives a serious command she always obeys. Managing to transform into a robot boy against the creatures, observing the blows Lux realizes that this is over limit. Going forward, Celestia receives only one blow and is thrown away. The girl's powers are all neutralized, thus catching Leisha and throwing her against another divine dragon. Taking a crystal ball in his hand, Lux's older brother arrives, but suddenly he hears a whistle and the commands given to the Abyss and Ragnarok are weakened by the boss for a period of time. Managing to give a reverse command, he asks him to surrender quickly and spares everyone's lives. Hayes reveals that all this time they fell into his trap and brought another Ragnarok. Attacking Ragnarok, it doesn't work out because the blows get stronger with each injury she receives. Leisha is captured, but Lux manages to save her and asks to use over limit. Leisha finds this power very dangerous. Activating the power, she remembers her brother's words that he intends to save his childhood friend. However, nothing will change after saving her. He can't protect or do anything. There's nothing in his ideal future. The more he attacks, the stronger Ragnarok becomes, receiving strength from his friends, managing to activate the over limit. Showing Bahamut's true form, he manages to defeat Ragnarok with just one blow and make the ruin fall. Hayes still has a plan, but Lux's brother says there's no way to beat him. Even with a divine suit, Ragnarok, who has been infinitely strengthened, can't beat him in any way. If it weren't for Bahamut in over limit, Hayes would have won. Lux's brother realizes that he is a terribly weak enemy. In his room, it is now Fi's turn to take care of him and thanks him for keeping his promise and loving him very much. The next day, the girls throw a party for Lux's recovery. Leisha wants to invite him to the Foundation Festival. When he was about to finish, Krolsifer invites him first and soon after Celestia also wants to get even closer to him as a friend. The teacher asks them to choose one of the girls to go to the festival. The scene changes to him walking with his sister who asks him to be careful. Since the Imperial Assassin Dagger escaped, she was a prisoner in the royal capital. In the time of the ancient empire, it was the strongest mecha dragon who would be the emperor. Thanks to a report, they learned that Lux was a target since she destroyed the empire. Looking around, the girls are already ready and the first is Celestia, who really enjoyed the festival and thinks it's amazing that he's the only boy and is loved by everyone, unlike her who is avoided and hated. The next meeting is with Krolsifer, which is in a fancy place.
place where there are only nobles. After dancing, she reveals that Alterize came to the Foundation Festival. She thinks she's watching the meeting from somewhere. Asking for a kiss even though it's fake to fool the girl, she goes for it and gives her a real kiss. The girls are impressed and think Krolsifer is a strong rival against Celestia. The one who wasn't chosen ended up being Leisha, but she ended up understanding why. But she asks Lux to become her knight, since she will need it when she graduates, and her duties will increase considerably. Everyone around her says that she needs a strong and exclusive person. Since he saw her tattoo, he would be the ideal person. Lux, as a surviving member of the old empire, is a criminal. She knows that this is a difficulty, but she wants him to think about it until the last day of the foundation, when she will give a speech to the entire nation. The next day, he talks to his sister, who asks him not to try so hard. Thanks to the current circumstances, he can only use Bahamut for 12 minutes. Suddenly, Kiriheim Yorika appears, calling him master, a Dreg knight servant of the emperor's family. When asked if he came to eliminate him, she replies that she came to serve the boy. Then he asks for an order. Lux wants to think a little and will give the answer until the battle of the dragons is over. Leaving the place, he will wait as long as necessary. At dusk they both leave together. He researched a little more about Yorika. As a drag knight of a country that wanted to conquer the old empire, he signed a contract with his and was inserted into the imperial army. She says it's true, but she wants him to promise that he will destroy the empire and take it back. Lux reveals that she has no intention of doing so at this point. When the girls suddenly appear attacking Yorika, she defends them quite easily and transforms. All the girls use the attack against each other. Yorika wants answers. Her loyalty will not change. As proof, if he comes with her, she will tell her most precious secret. A plan that involves the future of this country. He soon leaves the place and is eager to see the next time they will meet. The scene changes to Haze in the ruins where the activation has been successfully completed. However, Oyuru is also there, asking if he can trust her, to which she replies yes, since she is eating out of his hand. The scene returns to Lux in the room where the nobles meet again, in which they are trying to recapture the kingdom. The survivors of the old kingdom are meeting and plotting something. The one leading all this is a man named Foles. After the battle with the dragon, he would put the plan into practice. They will attack when the defense is insufficient. He wants Lux to be the secret weapon of this trump card. According to the information from his spy, in disabled villages of this kingdom in which he was summoned that time the noble's son was captured. The abyss are hiding in that place. Lux will be the person who will be the bait to follow the hundred abyss to them. Eri thinks this is crazy, but the man knows everything that happened with them and the teacher who entered the ruins. If he does this he will have all the charges dropped. But he asks her to win the battle of the dragons. Even though her sister is quite worried, Lux accepts the terms. Eri asks why he didn't tell her he can't use Bahamut. The time he has is insufficient. When his dragon was restored he felt the presence, and when he realized it he saw that it was Yukura running after him and asking the same question. Are you going to fight the king today? Lux is curious about the fact that he is still honoring the contract. She explains that she made a promise to her brother. When she was born, she could recognize someone's bloodlust without hesitation and she could eliminate them. Her father always called her a cruel monster. A few years later, her father passed away and her brother inherited the country. Unlike her, her brother was a sickly child and had a good heart. He protected the country and cared for it, but above all, he tried to protect his older sister. Since the country was destroyed by the old empire, Lux realizes that her father has destroyed and made a contract with her. As she gets closer, she realizes that he looks a lot like her brother. But her brother died a long time ago. Thanks to her brother, she decided to remain loyal to Lux's father, thanks to the contract that wants to overthrow this new empire. However, he doesn't want to do it, so she considers him her enemy and asks him not to be eliminated tomorrow. Before she does it, the battle finally began. Lux ended up facing a formidable opponent, but still managed to defeat him easily. Lux is very tired and her sister can see this, but asks her to pay attention to the plan. During Leisha's battle, she ended up being ambushed and controlled, thus shooting at the audience. Looking at people's retinas, you can see that they are being controlled. Seeing that she can't do anything, Leisha ends up being arrested and Lux goes to the place to take the abyss to the nobles. Flying back to the capital, she manages to destroy one with ease and arrives safe and sound at the place. Meanwhile, we see Leisha arrested and Eri explains that her brother ended up being taken to become a distraction. Lux is doing all this so that the girls don't get into danger. Everyone knows that the person who controlled Leisha's dragon was Yorika. The girls must find a way to defeat the girl and save Leisha. The scene returns to Lux, who is resting, but hears a noise outside, where she finds a man who explains that when they were defeating the Abyss, the insurgent army appeared, but Lux remembers that they were supposed to appear only after the Battle of the Dragons. Then he realizes that the enemy force has decided to attack first and the dragon battle has been suspended. Meanwhile, Lux has met the same man from that time. The man comments that at this time the royal capital has already fallen and he must continue the purpose of the old empire and take the throne as the new emperor. The man revealed as the publicly declared emperor will gain authority over the country. So you can do whatever you want, so you will use everything to the limit of tyranny. Lux doesn't want to let that happen. Heading towards the man, he manages to dodge easily. He realizes that he can't use Bahamut, so he gives a valuable tip. At that moment a disaster approaches the kingdom. Something with tremendous power equal to Ragnarok. When he looks to the side, he realizes that a scary monster is coming and it is a giant warrior from the fifth ruin. Realizing that he can't 
can't use Bahamut for much longer, he goes towards the boy who is surrounded, managing to cut off the robot's mechanical arm. This wasn't the real Bahamut and had transformed into the real one. Tremendously angry at having been tricked, he goes after the boy who destroys him quite easily and manages to contain several robots. The scene changes to Lisha in jail, where Sonia has managed to open the door and shows him the aberration that is heading towards the royal capital. Sonia says that it is only a matter of time until the kingdom is defeated, but she knows that she has a mark on her belly, asking her to remove it. Her guards are about to do so. Calling for Lux, he appears at the scene. Waynes asks everyone to give up while there is still time. Krolsifer appears shooting at the giant robot. However, it is still no match for the man, but Fi also appears holding the creature's hand. Even so, Waynes knows that all this is useless until Leisha arrives with her gravity power, which was also unable to do anything. But with her power, Lux takes the girl's hand and together they manage to strengthen the gravity power, thus making the creature kneel. Together with Fi and Krolsifer, they manage to hold the creature and freeze its hands. As soon as they receive the news that the creature can no longer walk, they have to wait around 10 minutes to recover. Waynes is getting more and more furious with what is happening. Thinking that the fight was already over, they are wrong and Wayne puts on his divine dragon mecha, and with just one blow he split half the city in half. While everyone is taking care of Waynes and his troops, Sonia heads towards the royal capital so she can take over the kingdom. However, Celestia appears to put an end to this farce. Meanwhile, Leisha is having a lot of difficulties against Waynes. Even suffering on the battlefield she does not want to give up and continues fighting against the girl. Waynes realizes that Bahamut is not there. In the meantime he reached the creature's head. There, he found Yorika, who soon realized that he had not reconsidered his proposal to destroy the Empire, so he would do it with Aerie. Lux found a reason to fight, to save Yorika. Laughing at him, with a beautiful sword dance, Lux manages to retreat and asks why her brother died. She reveals that he was killed by someone from the old Empire. At that time, they laid siege to the castle when she was not there, and as a condition for her to spare his life, she was taken as a subordinate of the Empire. However, the veteran officers who abandoned the war effort due to the difference in the Empire's military power, serving their own interests, they blamed her brother, beheaded him and offered his head. Therefore, she must keep the contract she has with the old Empire. Lux thinks she should live her life the way she wants. She doesn't listen and creates a world in which the two are fighting. Appearing in front of him, she throws him away. With a beautiful sword strike, he managed to enter the girl's mind with beautiful words, thus making her remember her brother and lost the battle. Lux explains that he tried to change this country, but ultimately failed. If he could help, he wanted to do most of it on his own. To make that happen, he decided to destroy the Arcadia Empire. Yorika is surprised to find someone who destroyed his own country to save it. Then he realizes that he was wrong all along. He has been fighting alone for the good of the Arcadia Empire since the beginning. Managing to defeat her, Leisha is having a lot of trouble. Suffering a blow, Lux appears to pick her up. Soon the creature manages to move again and puts its eye out and the destruction of the capital will be in 30 seconds. Waynes did not imagine that Yorika would side with Lux. Getting angry and wanting to end this country with her own hands, however, Leisha steps in front to stop it. Managing to defeat Leisha with ease, Lux appears and defeats Waynes with just one blow and manages to pick up Leisha. The final day of the festival has arrived, Leisha gives her speech and declares Lux as her personal knight. The scene changes to the two of them inside the palace, where she promises to use all her strength to protect everyone while facing her older brother, who soon leaves the place. Leisha thinks they should deepen their friendship, but the girls interrupt her. Krolsifer did not expect anything more from her fiancé. Celestia was very happy to have sworn allegiance to the flag of that country. Yorika also appears at the scene, who from now on will be loyal to the same. Leisha gets irritated and immediately asks who Ama is, and so ends the anime Saijuku Mohai no Bahamut.